I watched an Elvis Presley post-military film. I cut off all of my hair. I'm wearing southern gray. And this evening I'm going to read U.S. Supreme Court decisions by our late Chief Justice Rehnquist. The slapping sound that you hear is a borderline Christian that's at my feet whipping me lightly as if to say, Tommy, please stop this blasphemy now. This is the Jeep, a little fourth dimensional being. You see he has the heart on his side because he loves, because it's about love. But the three most important things that one should understand about rebellion are these. The first is don't throw the baby out with the bath water. The second, once it's in your head, you rule over it and don't need anyone's permission to do so. The third is that we're mortal and want to live. Otherwise, we wouldn't care. None of it would make any difference. So as always, it is our physical being that is the most vulnerable. No one has a monopoly over anything that universally affects humans. Even the proverbials, love thy neighbor. The two other elements reveal a sort of tautology. If you avoid things that adversely impact your body, it is remarkably resilient. Hence, the necessity for weaponry. But what necessitates weaponry? It's the easiest way to acquire things you don't have. Just take them. So in this haves and haves not America where weaponry and aggression are somewhat controlled, deception becomes a more powerful weapon. So the attacks are both psychic with deception and physical. One of the greatest deceptions is that law enforcement keeps the peace. But anyone involved in it knows that peace is most attributable to voluntary assent. It's axiomatic. The fact just alluded to proves that this is true, but that truth is concealed because it creates a conflict with the idea of anarchy, which is based on the belief that if you leave us the fuck alone, that people are essentially kind and peaceful, as opposed to conservatism, which is based on the idea that people are essentially evil, the fall of man, and must be controlled. This idea is most often attributable to a work by Hobbes known as Leviathan. So conservatives employ deception for one primary reason, to maintain the social order in which they prosper. But here's the kicker. Home field advantage. Come and play our game in our field. When you do that, you become one of them. And much literature, art, film, censorship, all more or less beginning with the Holy Inquisition, have been devoted to the idea that there is no escape. Defeat them and you become one of them. So whenever someone resorts to violence, for example, the conservatives are overjoyed. Nazi, Tatsi, another Nazi. And that's why they created the devil and attribute to that personage deception, violence, wealth, power, fame, all projections of themselves. 
they are psychotic. They create this self-creation called the devil and then create this other thing called God. The latter is if to say, we want to be like this, but we just can't help ourselves. So let's go off to Wall Street, Las Vegas, Washington, in search of the golden calf. But what rebellion is really all about is the power of creation and what the nature of that actually is as opposed to what they want us to believe.